Hello everyone. This is Anil Lakshmi, Assistant Professor of Deputy Department from RMB Engineering College. So in this session, I would like to discuss about the cycloconverter. Uh, so in the subject power electronics, where our unit five is all about the cycloconverter and AC voltage controller. So unit five can be uh, segregated into two major division. One is cycloconverter, the other one will be AC voltage controller. So we will discuss AC voltage controller in another video. So for today's discussion, let me take cycloconverter. As the name itself tells us that cycloconverter, which is going to convert the number of cycles in turn, which is the frequency. As we know, frequency is the number of cycles per second. So when we want to change this, uh, when we want to change the frequency, then we can go for cycloconverter. So again, in this cycloconverter, where we have a step up cycloconverter and step down cycloconverter. So in step up cycloconverter, where uh, the output frequency will be greater than the input frequency, that is the supply frequency, Fs. Fs is the supply frequency and F0 is the output frequency. Where when the output frequency is greater than the input, input frequency, then we we'll call that as a step up cycloconverter. And vice versa will be the step down cycloconverter, where output frequency is less than the input frequency. Output frequency, when it is less than the input frequency, we say that as a step down cycloconverter, where we are going to step, in, where we're going to step down the frequency. So for today's session, as uh, for single phase, it is a, it's a very simple uh, circuit in, in case of a sim single phase. In single phase, there we have, <coughs> where we have uh, again the step up cycloconverter and the step down cycloconverter, where we can convert the number of uh, the cycles, which in turn the frequency. So now uh, for, for today's uh, discussion, let me go to three phase to single phase. It's a bit, um, where you can see that it's a bit complicated circuit, circuit is a bit complicated and when we see the working also it's a bit complicated. As we already know the working of single phase cycle converter, so let me proceed with the three phase to single phase cycle converter. So here in single phase to single phase cycle converter where single phase AC, where our output is also single phase AC, only the frequency will be varied, frequency will be changed, either the frequency will be stepped up or the frequency will be stepped down. Right. Whereas in case of three phase to single phase cycle converter, the input will be a three phase AC supply, output will be a single phase AC. So, where we need to convert three phase to single phase, as well as we need to change the frequency, we have to convert the frequency. So, here I am going to take a step down three phase to single phase step down cycle converter. Where as we know, in step down cycle converter, the output frequency should be less than the input frequency. Right. So, this is the circuit diagram, uh, circuit of a uh, three phase to single phase cyclo converter. So, when we take the three phase to single phase cyclo converter, here we have a positive group of uh, thyristors and we have negative group of thyristors. Both are connected anti parallelly, that is back to back, and the load is connected here. And the single phase load, since we are going to convert three phase to single phase, the load is a single phase AC load. So, here we have a positive group of thyristors and a negative group of thyristors, where this is the Diagram where it is in the expanded form. So here we can see that the positive group thyristors connected in this form. Since it is a three phase, so we have three thyristors connected in this form. And similarly, this, these are the negative thyristors, negative group thyristors, where for three phase again three thyristors connected in this uh, in this direction. So you can see that this is actually the positive group of thyristors, and this is our negative group of thyristors. In between this positive group and negative group, where we are going to the meeting point of this is the point where we are going to connect our load, and the other end of the load will be a neutral, will be connected to neutral. But here you can see that an another component IG reactor, an inductor is connected here, reactor is connected here. In between this positive group and negative group. Why? Because see, as uh, we know that the average value of positive group and the average value of the negative group will be uh, same. Right. So when we take the average value of this positive group, I mean the voltage of the average of uh, average voltage of the positive group as well as the average voltage of the negative group will be same. But when you take instantaneously, they are not same. Right. When we, when the instant when we take the instantaneous voltage, they are not same. So therefore, uh, what will happen? That is, in so due to the potential difference between these two groups. Right. So average is same, but the instantaneous values are not same. So therefore, when we take instantaneously, the voltages are uh, different at both positive group and negative group. And due to that, there is a potential difference will be existing between this positive group and the negative group. So what will happen actually whenever uh, or whenever uh, wherever we have a potential difference and if the circuit is a closed one, we will have a current. So that means in that way, we are going to get a circulating current here. So because of the potential difference created between this positive group and the negative group. So due to that potential difference, you know, we have a circulating current and this current is circulating inside. So in order to suppress that circulating current, we are going for this IG reactor, where IG is nothing but intergroup reactor. It's a reactor connected between these two groups. Right? 
So that is the purpose of having this IG reactor. IG reactor is uh, used here to suppress the circulating current. Why do we get circulating current? Because the instantaneous values of the both positive group and the negative group voltages are not same. So therefore, there exists a potential difference. And due to the potential difference, there will be a circulating current. So in order to suppress the circulating current, we are putting this IG reactor in between this positive group and negative group. So after that, uh, then the uh, load is connected here. Right? So we will see how this uh, three phase AC supply is connected, is converted into single phase AC, and also how the frequency is stepped down. So here uh, we are going to take it for uh, one by eight FS, right? So as, as we know that, well, one, one second. So let me wait for you. Yes. So here, uh, since it is uh, since the step down, uh, we are going to discuss about step down cyclo converter. As we know that the F naught, F naught is the output frequency. Output frequency here we are going to take it for one by eight times of uh, supply frequency. That is eight cycles of supply frequency should be converted into one cycle of output frequency. That is the that is the logic here. So here F S is nothing but the supply frequency. F naught is the output frequency. And 1 by 8 times of FS, which means that 8 cycles of input should be converted into 1 cycle. So as I say that if it is 8 cycles of input that should be converted into 1 cycle, so obviously we know that the first 4 cycles should be converted into positive, uh, positive half cycle and the next 4 cycles should be converted into negative half cycle. So altogether the 8 cycles should be converted into one cycle. So therefore, here, uh, here it is shown only for a half a cycle. In the next slide, we will we, we'll see the entire cycle. We will see for entire cycle. So for half cycle here, you can see that the four cycles, right? So here you can see that the four cycles are converted here. Four cycles are converted into, four cycles are converted. Four cycles are converted here into positive uh, half cycle. So here you can see that we, uh, we are going to convert the four cycles into one positive half cycle, this dotted line. So here you can see that the points marked here, let me take this point as CM. Right, this is my point M. At, uh, this is point M, N, O. This is point O, and this is point P, and this is Q. Just you can name something A, B, C, D also. You can name it, right? So you can name the points where it is a crossing crossing point of two um, two voltages, right? Two uh, line voltages. So it's a crossing point of two different line voltages. So that that those points you can take it as a M, N, O, P, Q, R, S. So or you can also take it as A, B, C, D. Right. So here, let me take that M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, S is the midpoint. And again, there is a, again, I'm going to take the next half of the uh, points that, uh, that is T, U, T, U, V, W, X, Y. T, U, V, W, X, Y, X, Y. So these are the points I'm going to take, where these points are the crossing points of two uh, voltages, two different voltages here. So here, the idea here is, uh, since we are going to take, we are going to do for step down cyclo converter, where for stepping down, I have to make uh, uh, eight cycles of input should be converted into one cycle of output. Right? So that which means that uh, first four cycles should be converted into positive, positive half cycle, and the next four cycles should be converted into negative half cycle. So for converting that first, first four cycles, let me take the first four cycles, and have we marked the points here, the crossing points we marked it here. So here the idea here is I have to start my alpha to be, I have to start my alpha with 90 degrees. So that is the idea here. So I have to start my alpha. The firing angle should be start with 90 degrees at the point M, right? So at the point M, I'm going to I'm going to start my alpha to be 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep on reduce this alpha equal at equal interval. That is a uh, the equal value, or I'm going to uh, successively I'm going to reduce the alpha. So, for example, if at M, if I'm going to take my alpha to be 90 degrees, then at M, it will be a little bit lesser than 90. And then in O, it will be still lesser than the, still lesser than the value which we, uh, which we made it at M. So, like that, we are going to keep on decrease the alpha value up to S, right? So, we started from alpha 90 degrees. We're going to keep on reduce the alpha value at each and every, interval, each and every point. And then, and thus, we are going to keep on reduce that. And then, when we see that at the middle point, S, the alpha becomes zero. So, from 90 degrees, um, so we are, we are moving to alpha 0 degree at S. So we started your alpha 90 degree at M point. At N point, we are going to reduce it a little bit. Then still at O, we are going to still more reduce that. And similarly, we, we, we keep on reduce that at point S. If you can see that, the alpha becomes 0 degree. Right? And again, from S, yes, I'm going to keep on increase my alpha, which means that at T, I'm going to a little bit increase my alpha. Then at U, I'm going to still more increase like that. I'm going to increase my alpha up to the point Y. 
right? So the same with the same interval, whatever value of alpha I reduce, no, the same amount of value I should reduce it. I should reduce from m to s. The same amount of alpha value I should increase it from s to y. So that is the logic here. So if I keep on increase again, you can see that at s the alpha is zero degree. So if I'm going to keep on increase my alpha at y, my alpha again will become ninety degree. So this is the idea. So I have to start from alpha 90 degree, I have to keep on reduce up to 0 degree and you can see that that is the middle point yes. Then from the middle point yes, again I am going to increase my alpha up to 90 degree, that is my point y. So m to s, I am going to decrease the alpha and then from s to y, I am going to increase the alpha. Right? So that is the idea. So if we do like this, what will happen? We will see this. Right? We will see what is happening. Here yeah, we can see that. Yes. So here we can see that. So the idea here is to be we have to increase the alpha from 90 degree to 0 degree again from 0 degree to 90 degree. So first we are going to decrease the alpha from 90 to 0. Then again we are going to increase it from 0 to 90. So that is the idea. So here we can see that here it is shown for full cycle. Right, full half cycle. As I told you already, the first four cycles should be converted into positive half cycle, positive half, and the next four cycles, right? The, the, the next four cycles should be converted into a negative half cycle. So that is the idea. Here you can see that. So the first four cycles is converted into positive half, and the next four cycles is converted into negative half. And for a positive half cycle, as we uh, as we said that the starting alpha should be 90 degree. So from 90 degree, we are going to keep on decrease the alpha. So at this point, at the middle point, and the alpha will become zero degree. We are going to keep on decrease the alpha from 90 to zero degree. And again, from this point, we are going to keep on increase our alpha to 90 degree. So 90 to 0, again from 0 to 90. Again from 0 to 90, this is for positive half cycle. Similarly, for negative half cycle, what we have to do is, again, we have to start alpha from 90 degree. So at this point, and we have to keep on increase our alpha up to 180 degree. And you can see that is our middle point. Then from 180 degree, again, you have to keep on increase, decrease your alpha up to 90 degrees. So this is the alpha pattern you have to follow for one full cycle. So for one full cycle, you can take like that is from 90 to 0, then again from 0 to 90. And then this is for positive half cycle. And for negative half cycle, 90 to 180, again from 180 to 90. So the, this makes the entire complete one cycle. So there you can see that all eight cycles have been converted into one cycle. Right. So thus we have obtained, thus we made the step down cyclo converter where we are stepping down our output frequency to 1 for input frequency of 8. That is 8 cycles of 8 cycles of uh, supply frequency. Supply is converted into 1 cycle of output. Is that clear? So therefore we can say this is our step down cyclo converter. The alpha pattern is 90 to 0, then from 0 to 90 and this is for positive half cycle and for 180, that is a, for negative half cycle, this is from 90 to 180 and from 180 to 90 again. So here we can see that uh, the below waveform is the current waveform. So here you can see that this is the, the, the waveform. Here it is the voltage, whereas the below one is the current. So here we can see that here during this portion, here during this portion, we can see that the voltage is positive, but current is still negative because it's a lagging power factor. I mean, um, it's a lagging one, why? Because our load is an inductive load. So therefore, you can see that the current still lags. It's a load that lags by some angle, right? So therefore, here you can here we can see that the voltage is positive, but still current is negative. So therefore, the power will be negative, which means that the inversion operation will be taking place. Whereas during this period, if we take both voltage and current, both are positive. Here you can see that the voltage is also positive and current is also positive. So therefore, the power is positive power, which means the rectification. Again, here during this period, we can see that the voltage becomes negative negative this period right this inversion right voltage becomes negative but current is positive again the power is negative which means the inversion operation will be taking place and here again both voltage as well as the current are negative so therefore the power is positive again so therefore the rectification operation will be taking place here you can see that uh, for conversion of one full cycle the alpha pattern is uh, alpha pattern is very important here. So alpha should start from 90 degree and it should go up to 0 degree for positive half cycle. And for negative half cycle, 
uh, it should be from 90 to 180, then again from 90, uh, 180 to 90. So this is the pattern of alpha where we have to follow for one full cycle. Here we can see the same thing. So here we can see that the inversion and rectification operation was keep on uh, alternately it was going on. Thus, and uh, now we should know at what value of alpha have to reduce it. As well as we know that we should start our alpha from 90 and we should keep on decrease it and we should go up to 0 degree. But I find we should know what at what, what factor have to reduce that alpha. So uh, for the factor, what we have to reduce is this is the formula, you can use it. So here for here we have taken F0 to be 1 by 8 F, Fs. This is the ratio where we are going to step it down. So eight cycles of input have to be converted into one cycle of output. So here the formula will be the factor, the ratio at which you want to convert. Here it is 1 by 8. So whatever value we want to convert, we can take that. So that is 1 by 8 into 120 degree, right? So therefore, uh, if you take 1 by 8 into 120 degree, it gives you 15 degree, which means that for each and every successor alpha, I have to reduce 15, 15 degree, right? Which means that uh, as, it, as we know that we are going to start our, as we know that we are going to start our alpha from alpha, Yes, alpha from 90 degree. Yes, so we are going to start of the alpha from 90 degree. So for the next point, I have to remake it as 75 degree because 90 minus 15 gives you 75 degree. And for the next point, 75 minus 15 again will give you 60 degree. Like that, we have to keep on decreasing. So 90, 75, 60, then 45, then 30 degree, then 15 degree, then 0 degree. Like that, we have to keep on reducing. Similarly, as if you're going to increase also, we have to keep on increase 15, 15 degree. So 15 then 30, then 45, then 60, then uh, 75, then 90 degrees. So this is how we have to reduce as well as do, we have to increase our alpha for making, for, step down, for stepping down the frequency. Right? So here it is for 1 by 8. So what if I'm going to do it for 1 by 4, then according to, according to that, I have to multiply 1 by 4 into 120. And based on that, for that value of alpha, I have to keep on increase and then I have to keep on decrease it. Right? So this is the idea of converting the three phase, uh, three phase to single phase step down cyclo converter. Thank you.